Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today we're going to be talking about how to build your own custom quizzes or surveys with multiple questions, multiple answers, and even the option to select multiple answers for different questions, as well as a way to indicate to users whether they got the answer right or wrong, show them the total of how many answers they got right or wrong, and to store all that information in a data collection after submission. So if you want to learn all that and more, let's get started. Okay, so for this uh, demo, we're starting off with a blank Wix website, and I'm currently working inside of Wix Classic or the Wix editor, but everything that I'm going to show you today can be applied to Wix Studio. Obviously, from a design perspective, things will be a little different, but in terms of how we set up the CMS and the code and the basic design concept, all uh, will be possible in Wix Studio as well. So the first thing that we're going to do before we even start doing any code or design is talk a little bit about how we're going to structure our data in the CMS. And we're going to be starting off by building a very, very basic quiz. And then we'll talk about how we can make that quiz slightly more complex and also what the differences would be between, let's say, a quiz or test and a survey. So in order to open up the CMS, you'll want to go over here uh, to the left click on CMS. And if you haven't done so yet, you just click right over here to add the CMS to your site. And this should really just take a few seconds. Uh, and once you do, then you'll see over here you have uh, your collections and then you can go over here and create your first collection. So I'm going to go over here and click that. And uh, we can create with AI or start from scratch. I'm going to start from scratch because we're going to be adding in all our own fields and data, even though I might generate some of the data for my specific quiz with AI later on. I really want a lot of control over the data structure here and also explain uh, as and also to explain as we add in the fields. Uh, so I'm going to go and click here, start from scratch, and I'm going to call this my quiz. OK, so this is going to be a quiz collection and I'm going to go ahead and click create. And essentially what's going to be inside of this quiz collection are the different questions that will make up my quiz. Um, so here we see that we are by default given this title field. And I actually don't need a title field, but I want to have a question field. So a place where we're going to put in the question that the user is going to answer. So I'm going to go over here and click add field. And this is going to be a text field. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose that field type. And this is going to be my question. OK, and you can see here uh, for those of you who it's not the first time on the channel and you've used like dev mode and, um, you know, coding on Wix before, you'll notice that at the moment we only have the field name and we currently don't have the option to see um, the field ID or whatever it's called that we actually see inside of the code. So if you want to be able to see that as you're adding in your fields, then you can go and before you add in any fields at all, just go right up here uh, to the top of your site where it says dev mode and uh, turn dev mode on. Even though we're not writing any code yet, it kind of opens up your editor to have more options and more views uh, than you would without dev mode. Uh, if you're fine just using whatever IDs and stuff that Wix assigns, then you don't have to do this at this point. Uh, but if you want kind of full control and full view, then you can just turn on dev mode. So now that I've done that, uh, let's head back into our collection. And if you ever accidentally go out of your collection, you can find it again just by going right over here and then going to your collections. And you can see here the collection that we created. So I'm just going to click on it to open it up again. And I'm going to add in the field. And you can see text choose field type. And now you can see here the field ID. So essentially, this is the name that we're going to have for the field inside the code. And it's something that you can't change once you create the field. That's why if you want more control and to just verify your IDs as they're appealing in the code, then you need to turn on dev mode like I did just now. So that's a little explanation of why I did what I did. And I'll just again call this questions and the field ID. Uh, sorry, just question singular, we'll only have one question uh, per question, and then we'll have possibly multiple answers. Uh, so question, and I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And now that we've added in this new field, and I don't need this title field here, if for some reason, your quiz includes like both a title and a question for each question, then you can leave it in, I guess. But for my quiz, I don't need it. 
So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make this question the primary right over here. And now that I've made it the primary, I can go ahead and I can just go ahead and delete. Whoops. I can go ahead and delete this title. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Yes, I'm very sure that I want to delete it. And it's gone. Okay, so we have a question. And the next thing that we're going to need uh, in order to create a quiz is we're going to want to have some answers. Uh, so we're going to add a new field for our answers. And here's a place where if you were creating this collection intuitively on your own, uh, you might be inclined, let's say, to add a field and add, let's say, a text field and then call this one, let's say, answer one. Let's say it's a question with like multiple answers and the user needs to choose one answer and then to create another field and call it answer two and another field and call it answer three. And this is a possibility. Um, for example, if you know that every question in your quiz is only going to have four answers, uh, no more, and you don't want any kind of flexibility uh, with regard to, you know, how many answers you provide for each question, then that is an option. But generally, it'll limit you in terms of the scalability of your quiz. Um, so what I do recommend doing instead of adding in one field for each answer is to add in a field which can take multiple uh, values. Okay, so in terms of fields that allow us to do that is uh, one field would be an array field. And another field which acts very similarly to an array field will be a tags field. So let's set up both of those just so I can show you how each one would work and then you can choose which one you want to use. So first off, let's demonstrate how we would set this up with an array. So I'm going to go ahead and add in field and scroll all the way down here to where I see array. And I'm going to click on that and choose field type. And this will be my answers. And I'm just going to go ahead and click save. And an array is a data type that is more intuitive to people who might have some background with coding. Essentially, you can think of it as kind of a list. Uh, and this list can be of any length and it has different items in the list. So this is kind of perfect for our answers because, you know, maybe we'll have questions with two answers, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five. Uh, and this really allows us that flexibility because there's no specific amount of um, answers that we can have. Um, the challenges here is that it's a little hard to add in kind of the array values uh, by hand. Um, so for example, like I would have to kind of write them in like this. So let's say, for example, this would be, so you can see here, so this would be like answer one, and then comma, and then answer two. Obviously, you'd write the uh, actual answers and not just answer one, answer two. Uh, and you can see that it's kind of uh, delineated by uh, these square brackets uh, on each end. And in between each answer, we have a comma. Uh, but this can get a little sticky if the answers get longer and you'd need to probably write it somewhere else, like in a notepad, and then paste it in. Uh, and if I just click Enter here, then this uh, saves it as an array. Okay, so that's one option for setting it up. And now I'm going to show you another option, which I think will be a little more intuitive for people who might not have so much background in coding. Uh, we're going to be doing some coding later on uh, either way, but I think that in terms of simplifying the setting up of the collection, uh, tags will be helpful for some people. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've deleted my array field, and let's go ahead and add in a new field that is a tags field. And in terms of how these fields uh, both work in the background, so essentially, tags is also an array. Uh, it's just built in order to work with like selection tags element, if you're familiar with that. And it has kind of an easier UI for people who are using Wix's no code solution as opposed to the code solution. Um, but essentially, the way it works in the background, and if we were to view the actual data here in the field in our code, it's actually just an array. Uh, so I'm going to add in these tags. And I'm just going to choose uh, the field type right over here. And we'll call this our answers. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And OK, awesome. So now here, let's convert this value to tags. OK, so now that you can see here uh, that we have the option to add in a tag. So I'm going to go ahead and click this right over here, Add Tag. And I can just type. So I can say, like, um, 
answer one, click enter, and then you see it added in this answer one. And I can go ahead and click answer two, and then go ahead and add in answer two. And essentially what this is, is it's exactly the same thing that we had before. It's essentially an array where the first item is answer one, the second is answer two. And I can easily also kind of go ahead and remove them if I don't want them. Uh, the only challenge here is one, so I can't really edit these tags. Okay, so once I put a tag in, it kind of exists and I can't edit it. So if I wanted to add in a new tag, I would have to kind of get rid of it and then type again. Another thing is that you can see that all the tags that I create kind of get remembered by the collection. So essentially what I'll end up having here is like a really long list with all of my answers. And I'll also, uh, for example, if I add in a new item, I'll also have those answers available for all of my items. So it could get like a little confusing to have like a long list of all your answers and the need to kind of get rid of them and retype them. Uh, but it, it does present a, not that I'm calling anybody a fool, but a more foolproof way of putting these answers into an array than actually building an array, which can sometimes get like a little complex. If you like forget quotation marks somewhere, you forget a comma somewhere, then you can end up in an uncomfortable situation where it's not working. Um, so those are the two options. I'll let you pick what you want. I'll continue working with these uh, selection tags or tags uh, because I think that it is likely going to be the choice, or at least from what I've seen, uh, it's likely the choice of uh, most people just in terms of ease of use. Uh, so I'm going to continue using these tags. And now what we need to think about is how we are going to store what the correct answer is. And for this uh, first quiz that I'm building, I'm going to assume that there's only one correct answer for each question. Okay, so now we've come to determining how to create the field for our correct answer. And here we're also at a crossroads because there's different ways that we can go. Uh, one option would be, for example, to add in a number field. Okay, and then uh, let's say put in the number one if option one is correct, or put in number two if option two is correct. Um, and this is a, a totally legitimate option, uh, but we might run into kind of a dead end if we eventually want to allow questions with multiple correct answers, uh, because then we'll only have one number, and then we'll be back to where we started, where we'll have to choose from either an array or uh, going to tags. So what I'm going to do here is actually instead of picking a number for the correct answer, I'm actually going to go ahead and select tags again. So let's create another tags field. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that field type. And this is going to be the uh, correct answers. And if you find kind of the naming that I gave to the fields a little confusing, you can go ahead and change it. Um, I kind of realized as I was creating it that maybe the field that I had called answers should be called options, and this should just be called answers. But as long as it's very clear to you what each field is, then you're good. So I'm going to call this one correct answers, and I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now all I need to do is essentially add in tags that correspond to the correct answer for my question. So I have like a mock question here now. Uh, what is the capital of France? And you can see here that I've added in four options. So we have Berlin, London, Paris, Madrid. So obviously the correct answer here is going to be Paris. Um, so here in my correct answers, I'll just need to add a tag for Paris and click enter. And essentially what we're going to do when we actually build the interface of the quiz on our website is just compare between this array or tags that we have here and the tag for the correct answer. And if the correct answer matches what the person selected from the other tags, then we know it's a correct answer, and if not, not. And this gives us several advantages as opposed to the number approach. Uh, one, which I already mentioned, that for example, if I wanted to allow people multiple answers here for, let's say, I thought Madrid was also a capital of France, so I can essentially also add in here, let's say, Madrid, and then both of these answers uh, would be valid. Uh, another advantage that we have is that the order of these answers essentially doesn't matter uh, because as long as the correct answer value matches the value um, that the person selected, then we're good. 
it doesn't matter if it was the first option in the answers or the second option and that will also open up the door for us for example if every quiz we want to uh, kind of mix around the order of our uh, different kind of answer options then we can because as long as it matches the correct answer tag then we're good so I've gone ahead and I've added in a few more questions to our quiz and this is really all that we need in order to set up the quiz collection so we have question we have answers or options and we have the correct answers uh, you'll notice here also that I've created like varying amounts for the answers so here there's only two answers here there's three just so we can see what that looks like uh, on the interface of our website and now that we're done setting up the collection, we can go ahead and add in the design elements that we'll need in order to display this quiz to the user. Okay, so in terms of design, there are also different ways that we can go, depending on how you want to display this quiz to the user. For example, if you wanted to display one question at a time, then you'd have to build out just one instance of each quiz, each question kind of design and then change that value dynamically after people move between different questions. Another option, which is the one I'm gonna go with because I think it's likely the most common use case is that you'll display all of the questions at the same time, one after the other. Uh, and in order to do that, we're going to be using a, an element called a repeater. Uh, so in order to find the repeater here inside of the classic editor, uh, again, if you're using Wix Studio, the element, the repeater element exists. It just might be in a slightly different place, so you'll have to look around. But everything that I'm just showing you now is something that you can implement on Wix Studio as well. Uh, so you'll go up here to the upper left where it says Add Elements. And then we're going to look for List. And here we have different lists or repeaters that we can add in. And these are all kind of pre-designed. So I'm going to go ahead and look for one that is not pre-designed. Here we have a few layouts that are not, and I'm going to choose this one, which just has one item after the other. And essentially what repeaters allow us to do is to design uh, one design and populate each item in the repeater with different data. Uh, so it'll follow the same design pattern, but the data will be different. And this will be perfect for displaying our different questions one after the other. Uh, so let's go ahead here and design what a question is going to look like. So first of all, I'll just make this a little less wide and I'll place it in the middle of the screen, just like that. And I'll drag it down so that we have some room here for the title. I'm going to drag in a title element right there and put it on top. And I'll call this my quiz. And now we can start to actually put things into our repeater. So the first thing we'll need for each question is a question. Okay, so we'll need some text that will display the actual question. And we can do that by adding in an element and just where I was before here. So let's add in a paragraph. And what I like to do when we are going to be populating a uh, an element with data is to encapsulate it in squiggly brackets. Okay, and that's just an indication to me visually that that's not what's actually going to be displaying on my website. That is what's going to be uh, populated by some data and you, you can do it however you want. Okay, this is not something that's required for it to work. Um, so here I'm just going to have the question. Okay, so now I know that, okay, this for each item in our repeater, this is going to display the actual question and I'm going to drag it here onto the item and you can see that it's repeating and that's because it's a repeater. <laughs> So this is what it means. Essentially, each of these is the same design wise, but when I actually connect it to data, I can have this display the first question and this display the second question and this display the third question. Um, so that's kind of the, the principle here. I'll make it a little wider just in case our question is a bit longer. And I'll also uh, change it to be bold, uh, just so that they can tell that this is the question and it's like of some importance as opposed to the answers. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make this item a little taller, increase the height a little bit, just so that we have room for the other element that we're going to add in, which is an input element. So you'll want to go down over here to where you see input, and you're going to look for something here called radio buttons. Okay, and radio buttons is essentially a multiple choice where we can select one 
uh, choice. So that's the first thing I'm going to demonstrate. And later on, I'll show you how we can also allow users to select multiple answers if necessary. So let's go ahead and add in just this basic uh, radio buttons. And I'll put that right over here. And at the moment, you can see that it's kind of just showing kind of some random numbers here, just an example of what radio buttons might include. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change that by going to manage choices. And I'm going to get rid of all these choices here. And I'm going to just edit the label here and say that this is going to be an answer. Okay, and obviously, like our question, this is also going to be populated with the different answers that we have in our selection tags inside of the collection. Okay, so obviously, it's not just going to show answer here, but it'll show the answers, the options that the user has to choose from. And if you have this case where one of the repeater items is displaying something slightly different than the other ones, then it's just because you made a change after you actually dragged the item into the the element into the repeater. Uh, so what you can do is you can just drag it out and drag it back in. And then you'll see they all display the same thing here now. Answer, 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 answer. Um, and now what we can do is essentially, this is pretty much all we need in terms of design. It's not super fancy. It's not super beautiful. Uh, if you don't want this kind of like background, you can also get rid of this background. So you can go change background. And let me just set it to be like just plain white, let's say. And now that we've created this uh, initial design for each of our questions, we can go ahead and start writing some code that will connect between the data that we have in our collection and the actual quiz on our website. So we're about to get started writing some code for our Wix website for this quiz page. Um, and you'll notice here that if you haven't done so yet, by the way, uh, you'll want to turn on dev mode like I did before. Um, so if you haven't done that yet, then this is the time to do it. And once you turn it on, you'll see that this code panel here is added to the site. Uh, if you don't see the code panel, it might be closed kind of like this. Uh, but as soon as you click here on the bottom uh, right over here, then it'll open up. And this is where we can write code for the specific page. And you can see here also the title, the name of the page that we're writing the code for. Uh, if you want to just double check, you can also go over here to where it says page code. And here, I only have one page on my site, but here you'll see a list of all your pages. And you can navigate between the code of the different pages uh, using this panel over here. But typically, when you navigate to a specific page of your website, you should have that pages code open inside of the code panel. Uh, so that's we're going to here is we're going to be writing the code. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the data from our collection here so that we can populate the repeater with the data from our collection. So in order to do that, we're going to be using a Velo API called uh, Wix data. So I'm going to import that API here up on top. So import Wix data and from Wix data. Okay, so that will allow us to run a query and get the data uh, from our website. The next thing I'm going to do, I'll just get rid of all this code here that we have in the middle. And I'm going to create another function here under my on ready function. And I'm going to call this function uh, populate quiz repeater. Uh, and it's going to be an asynchronous function because we need to query data from a collection and that's an asynchronous action. So this is going to be called populate quiz repeater. And here um, you can call your functions whatever you like. Um, it'll work whatever you call it, but I do recommend calling it something that is very clear uh, and intuitive and really indicates what the function does. So this is exactly the function that's going to be populating our quiz repeater. So I think that that's an appropriate name. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get a, I'm going to get the data uh, from the repeater. So I'm going to say here const, uh, sorry, not from the repeater, I'm going to get the data from the collection. So I'm going to say here const uh, quiz query result. And that's going to be equal to await Wix data dot query. And here what we're going to need is the collection ID. 
So if you don't recall what you called your collection, then you can always go uh, back over here to where it says databases on the side. And here you can have you have a list of all your collections. And uh, if you go over here, you can copy the collection ID. So I'm going to copy the collection ID. Uh, I'm going to close this side panel and I'm just going to paste the collection ID back right over here. So that's the collection that we're going to query. And since I'm not currently restricting uh, my query to any specific questions, I want all of the questions that I put in that collection. All I need to do now is use the find keyword in order to execute the query. After our query comes back, then we'll want to extract the items that come back from the query result because the actual result for the query includes a lot of metadata that we might not necessarily need. Uh, so I'm just going to say here const uh, quiz equals to quiz query result dot items. Okay, and this quiz is now an array. Okay, remember arrays. So you're gonna have to learn them eventually. Uh, but it's an array with all of the questions uh, from our collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first say uh, console.log quiz. And I'm going to add here just a note so that we know what this log is. And I'm going to call this function over here inside of my onReady. So I'm going to say populate quiz repeater. And what we'll do is I'm going to go into preview mode. And let's see what this data actually looks like so that you can have a better understanding about what's happening in the next steps. Okay, so here I am in preview mode. And here you can see uh, inside of this developer console, you can see the log that I put in with console.log. And we can see here that we have quiz and this is the array, which is actually the items that came back from our query. And if we go into one of these specific items, then you can see here that we have uh, the question. Okay, so which planet is known as the red planet. Uh, we have some other metadata here about the item that's default uh, data that Wix associates with every single item that you create in a collection. Uh, and we also have our answers, which you can see here is an array, even though we created it as tags inside of the collection. When we get the data on uh, using Wix query, it's still an array. And we also have the correct answers here, uh, which is an array with only one item. Okay, and now what we'll want to do is we'll want to take this data that we have over here and tell the repeater to use it in order to alter the design that we created. So before we actually take this data and pass it to the repeater, which is actually pretty simple, we're going to need to give instructions to the repeater how to handle this data in relation to the different elements that we have in each item. So in order to do that, we're going to need to create something called the on item ready for the repeater. And I'm going to do that inside of its own function here outside of the on ready just to keep things nice and clean. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new function. And this one doesn't need to be asynchronous. And I'm going to call this one setup quiz repeater. Okay, and here what we're going to do is we're going to actually select the repeater. And before we do that, we're going to need to give uh, unique names or IDs to the repeater and each element in the repeater. So if we take a look here at the items, uh, or the elements, sorry, inside of our editor, then you'll see that they each have uh, an ID. Okay, so this one's called repeater one, this one's called text two. And we could just use those directly in the code, but I don't recommend doing that at all. Because once we write a lot of code for our page, we're not going to remember what uh, what's text one and what's text two and what's text three and what's repeater one or two or three. Um, so really, you have to kind of think big and not only about what you're doing right now. Um, and that's why we can we can and we should uh, rename uh, these items, uh, these elements. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by selecting the repeater. And to rename them, uh, we have to go over here to the bottom right. Uh, and you can see here the ID of the element that I just selected. So here it's called repeater one. And I'm going to call this my quiz repeater. Just as I know, this is the repeater for the quiz. And then I'm going to select this item right over here. And this I can call uh, question or quiz question or question text, whatever you want. I'm just going to call this question text. 
And uh, last thing we're going to need to name is the radio buttons. So this is going to be my answers radio buttons. Okay, so I have also something that's telling me what this is the radio buttons for and also what kind of element it is. That's kind of how I chose to name it. You can choose your own naming conventions. Um, but this is one that I, I recommend. Um, so now that I've gone ahead and I've named my elements, I can select them here inside of the code. So to select an element, I'm going to need to use $W and then um, hashtag, and we're going to select our quiz repeater dot on item ready. And this on item ready will take item and item data. And we can also pass an index, but we don't need it right now. Again, I'm not going to make this uh, into a tutorial about repeaters because I do have other tutorials specifically on that subject. Uh, so if you want to kind of brush up on repeaters and how they work, I do recommend checking out some of those other videos on the channel. Uh, and here inside of the function, essentially, we can now select each of the elements using dollar $item. And uh, for example, here, we're going to have the question text. And I'll say here that dot text property of the question text, which is essentially what's written there, is going to be the item data dot question. Okay, so you can think of kind of the item data as one of the items in our collection. Okay, so each each item in the repeater is going to correspond to one item in the collection. And I'm going to associate different parts of the data with different elements in the repeater. So here I've associated the question text with the item data dot question, and I'm going to associate the radio buttons with our answers. Okay, but here we're going to need to do some additional manipulating of the data. Uh, because radio buttons uh, take the they have both labels and they have values as well uh, for each of the options. Um, and we're going to be using the same answer for both the label and the value, but we still need to set it up in the way that it Wix expects us to. Uh, so here I'm going to select the answers radio buttons, and we're going to be setting up the options for those radio buttons. And that's going to be equal to item data dot answers. But here we're going to need to do a little manipulation of the data. So we're going to be using something called dot map, which is a way for us to take an array and map it to new values. Uh, so I'm going to take the, um, the answers and I'm going to say that for each answer, we're essentially going to have an object. Okay, we're going to have an object. And that object is going to have a label. And it's also going to have a value. And both the label and the value are essentially going to be equal to the answer. So label is going to be answer and value is going to be answer. Okay. And now that we've done that, essentially, we've given the instructions for how to set up our repeater once it has data. And the next thing I want to do is just make sure that we actually call this function before we populate the quiz repeater. And we have to add one more line to our populate quiz repeater function, which is actually passing the data that we got from the query into the repeater. So I'm going to select the repeater here. So that's our quiz repeater dot data equals to quiz. Okay. And uh, just like that, we should be able to now see the data from our collection inside the repeater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head into preview mode. And let's see if this is working. Okay, so here I am in preview mode, and we can see that it's partially working. Um, so we do see our questions. Okay, so you can see one, each one here has a unique question. But for some reason, all of the answers are the same. And this is a really common uh, mistake when setting up repeaters. So I'm leaving it in the video, uh, just because there's a very high chance that it'll happen to you as well. And this usually stems from the fact that we use $W instead of $item. So if I take a look here, and if I go into where we set up the repeater, you can see here that for the question text, I used $item, but here I accidentally used $W, just because $W is what you usually use, so it's kind of 
if you type a lot and you're writing a lot of Wix code, you'll probably write $W instead of $item, even if you know what's right, uh, as I just did before. So I just need to change this into $item, and we'll head back into preview mode, and hopefully now we can see that all of our answers will be different, and that's what we can see here. So we see now that the correct answers are associated with the correct questions, and the last thing that we need to do is to decide how we want to handle the submission of the quiz. So if somebody finished the quiz and they uh, will, let's say, have a button here or something to say, I'm done with the quiz, what is going to happen then? Okay, so let's do some brainstorming about what we want to happen once our quiz is submitted. And again, this is something that is quite subjective uh, because different quizzes might need different results uh, and different ways that we display the results of the quiz to the user and different ways that we store the data of the results of the quiz. Um, so, I mean, your use case might need only one of the things that I'll demonstrate here, and it might need something that I'm not demonstrating here, but hopefully I'll demonstrate enough options to give you the tools to create whatever you need for your quiz. Um, so whatever our quiz might be uh, and whatever kind of submission technique we're going to use, we're definitely going to need some kind of button in order to let the user complete the quiz. So let's start by adding in that button. And I'm going to go right over here to buttons, and I'm just going to add in this blue button right over here. And I'll uh, go ahead and change text and icon, and let's just change this to say submit. And now the question arises, what's going to happen once the user clicks the button? So one thing I want to do is I want to check the answers of the quiz and see if the user uh, got any right and what they got right and what they got wrong and indicate that to the user. Uh, so in order to do that, what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll add in some kind of check mark element design. So let's go over here and look at, let's say, decorative. Let's see if I can find some kind of icon here that would work good as like a check mark to indicate that we got it right. So let me go ahead and look here at more icons. And you can also like import an icon from outside of Wix or whatnot. But let me see if we have here something like check. Okay, awesome. So we have some a bunch of check marks here. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll use this check mark right over here. Uh, actually, you know what? Do I like this one better? <laughs> The, the the designer in me is like starting to think now. So okay, let's let's pick this one, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna put it, let's say, right over here on the upper, or let's put it, hmm, I'll put it here on the bottom right, just because so it doesn't accidentally intersect. Let's say if I have a long question, I don't want it to bump into it. Obviously, this is like super subjective, and you can put it wherever you want if you even want to have this functionality. Uh, another icon that I'm going to want is like an X icon. And the idea is that we're going to display the check icon if the user got it right, and we're going to display the X icon if the user got it wrong. Um, so let me just go ahead here back to where we found our icon, and let's look for like an X icon. Let me search for that. Okay, so we have a bunch of Xs here. They're, they're all a lot more... Um, yeah, ostentatious than the uh, than the check mark that I added in. But let me go ahead and add in, let's say this X. So it'll be super obvious if you got it wrong, but it'll be mildly obvious if you got it right. Uh, and the idea is that once the user clicks submit, so I'm going to display the check mark for the answers that are correct, and I'm going to display the X for the answers that are incorrect. So before I hop in and write any code, let me first give names to each of these vector arts just so that I can use them uh, in my code more easily. So I've selected the check mark, and I'm going to go over here and just check mark. Okay, I'm going to change that ID. And let's select the X over here. And this will be our X mark. <laughs> so we have the X mark and we have the check mark. Uh, obviously, you can name them whatever you want. And now we're ready to create a new function which is going to be responsible for checking the answers. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a new function. And like almost everything that I'm showing you in this tutorial, 
there's more than one way to approach this problem. Uh, so there's more than one way to check the answers and display these different indicators based on the answers. Um, I'm showing you one option, but there are other options. So you don't have to, you know, definitely go with my option, but just take it into consideration. Um, and I'll try and give a word about what other options might be, even though we can't demonstrate them all uh, in this tutorial. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create that function. And I'll call it check answers. Okay, and I'll just give it a little space here from the function above it. And basically what we're going to do here in this check answers function is I'm going to use something called for each item in the repeater. So let me go ahead first and I'll select the repeater quiz repeater dot for each item. And this for each item is similar to the on item ready. It just it doesn't run when the repeater is ready. It runs whenever you run the for each item. Uh, so here it has the same um, the same parameters. And essentially what we can do is we can get the value of the answers that were selected. OK, so I can say here const selected answer equals two. And here we'll say uh, we'll select, sorry, the item. Again, I almost fell into the dollar W trap there. We'll select the item. And we'll select the answers radio buttons dot value. OK, and this should give us the value of the selected radio button. To be honest, I don't recall if this selected answer comes back as uh, plain text or as an array. So what I'll do here is I'll add in a console log just so that if we do encounter an issue, I'll at least have a log that will show me where I went wrong. Uh, so here I'll log the selected answer. And now I'm going to want to compare between the selected answer and the um, and the answer that we have stored in the database as the correct answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, if selected answer equals to item data dot correct answer. And here it's very important because this correct answer is going or correct answers, I think I called it correct answers. Uh, this is going to be an array. And since we're currently talking about the case where there's only one correct answer, so we're going to be comparing two strings. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say dot if item data dot correct answers uh, zero. OK, so I'm assuming that there's only because if you remember, correct answers is an array. So I'm going to want to get the one item in that array because I know that this is a question that only has one correct answer. And we'll talk about other scenarios uh, later on. So if the selected answer is equal to the correct answer, then we will display our um, the check mark again here dollar item, and here we're going to have check mark dot let's say show, and in order for this to work, we're going to want to have our vector arts both hidden uh, by default. So let me go ahead and do that quickly. Uh, so if we go over here, I have the x mark already selected, and I'm going to make that hidden. And let me go ahead and select the other one and make it hidden as well. So they're both hidden by default. And now what we're doing here inside of our code is we're showing the check mark if the uh, selected answer matches the correct answer. And else, we're going to say that item check mark, uh, sorry, item x mark dot show. So we'll show the x if the answer is incorrect. Okay, and I'm just going to add in one more log right over here, console.log with item data dot correct answers, just to make sure uh, that we that I got that one correctly as well. So this is going to be correct answer. Awesome. So this looks pretty good in terms of our check answer function. And now all we need to do is actually run this function when we click the submit button. So let me go ahead and select the submit button. And we're going to want to give this a name. So let me call this the submit button. 
And then here inside of our code, I'm going to do this here inside the onReady function right over here on the bottom. I'm just going to select the submit button. Submit button dot on click. And I'm going to run the check answers function. OK, and that should run it whenever we click that button and we're good to go. So let me go ahead into preview mode and let's see uh, if we have any luck here. OK, so here we are in preview mode and let's go ahead and answer the quiz and I'll answer some correctly and some incorrectly just so we can judge the functionality. Um, so what's the red planet? Mars. Uh, who wrote the famous play Hamlet? So let me say Charles Dickens and uh, capital city of France. I'll select Paris. OK, so this we should have two right and one wrong. And let me go ahead and click submit. And there we go. OK, so here we see check mark for the two correct answers. And here we have an X for the incorrect answer. Uh, so if we go over here, uh, we can just see the logs from what I put in before. So here we have the selected answer. So it turns out it's not an array, and that's why this worked. Uh, so it's just a string. Uh, if we were to use a multi-select checkbox, so something that we can select multiple answers from, then that would most likely be an array. And the correct answer is here in an array, but I'm separating it out because I'm selecting the item 0. So now that we've added in that cool functionality where we display to the user uh, if it's correct or not, let's also create a display which will indicate to the user how many total they got correct out of the total amount of questions. So in order to facilitate understanding how many questions we have total and how many the user selected correctly, I'm going to need to show you another approach to how we can manage the user answers. Uh, so you get a kind of a bonus of seeing two ways to approach um, how to manage the answers of the user. Um, so in order to gain more control over the data that's behind what we're actually seeing here inside of our quiz, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this quiz variable into a global variable. So essentially a variable that we can access from all the functions inside of our page code. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go right over here under our import. And I'm going to declare a new variable called let quiz. And then down here inside of our populate quiz repeater function, uh, instead of declaring the new variable over here, I'm actually just going to assign the query result to that already existing variable. And that means what we're able to do is that we are able to essentially access the data of the entire quiz from anywhere inside of our page code. And we can also alter that data from anywhere inside our page code. So that would give us access, for example, to know how many questions there are total in the quiz from anywhere inside of our page code. So that's one, one part of the mission complete. The other part of the mission is to know how many total were answered correct. So while what we built before here in check answers uh, visually indicates to us what is correct and what's not, we'd also have to have a way to aggregate and know the entire amount of correctly answered questions. So one option that we could do is we could declare, let's say, another variable up top called, uh, let's say, just for example, here we can declare let total correct. And then here inside of our code, uh, we could increment that by one each time that we encounter a correct answer. So let's say over here, we can say uh, total, oops, total correct plus equals one, and then keep on incrementing that by one. And that would give us the total of correct answers. But it's a little not so beautiful <laughs> in terms of how it solves the problem. Uh, and it would be much better if we had one aggregated place where we also had all of the user's answers. And we used that in order to determine uh, which answers were correct and what the total correct answers were. Um, so in order to do that, let me just kind of backtrack on this. Uh, what we'll do is whenever the user answers uh, one of the questions, we'll actually alter this quiz data and add in a new property that will store the answer of the user. 
And this will facilitate not only what we're doing now, but it will also make it easier for us to store this data of the user's answers inside of another collection at a later point. Um, so what we'll do over here is uh, we'll set up inside of our setup quiz repeater. We'll also set up an on change event for our answer radio buttons. So let's go ahead and do that right over here. I'm going to select item answer radio buttons dot on change, not on click, but on change. And essentially what we'll do is that every time the value here changes, we are going to store that value inside of our quiz. And we'll store it under the same item that, um, that our other data related to that question is stored. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll get the value of the currently selected answer. So let me say here, const selected answer equals to event. And event is that thing that made this event handler go off. So here it's the change of that um, specific radio button answer. And target is the element that is firing the event. And value here in this case will be the actual selected radio button. So now that we have the selected answer, we need to determine where we're going to store that selected answer. So we're going to need to know which current quiz question we're dealing with. And since the quiz that we have up here on top is an array, we're going to have to determine which item in the array we are currently corresponding to. And there's here, there's again, there's multiple ways that we can approach this. Uh, one approach could be to, for example, add here the index property and assume that the index of the current item in the repeater corresponds to the item in the quiz. And that's a good option if we know that we're definitely not changing the order of the quiz at any point. Um, but if we do, for some reason, change the order of kind of the questions in the array or the original quiz um, uh, array, then we could run into problems here. So it's not airtight. Another option would be to use the actual ID from the item data and compare it to an ID inside of the quiz array and that way find a specific index and that's a more secure way of doing it because the IDs will always match up. Okay, those IDs are unique. Um, so let's try that approach over here. So what I'll do is I'll say const um, question, let's call it a question index equals two. And here we're going to have to use something called um, find index. So we're going to say quiz dot find index. And here we have a function. So here we're going to have the item. And then we're going to say that it should be equal to the item, uh, sorry, item. And here we're going to have the item dot ID equals to item data dot ID, uh, item data dot underscore ID as well. Sorry, and you might not have seen that because I wasn't zoomed in, but hopefully now you can see it. And uh, now that we have the index of that specific question, uh, what we can do is we can say that quiz and uh, question index dot selected answer equals to selected answer. So essentially we're storing the selected answer inside of the original uh, quiz array. And now what we need to do is when we're checking the answers, instead of checking them inside the repeater, we actually can check them inside of the original uh, quiz object. So we can run through that quiz object and then compare all the answers and then kind of generate that final report regarding uh, what's been answered correctly and what we need to change in terms of the uh, visual um, interface of the quiz itself. So back here uh, on our page code, I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new function. And this function is going to be called uh, calculate totals calculate totals. And what it's going to do, uh, as in its name, it's going to be responsible for calculating 
the total questions uh, of the quiz and the total that was answered correctly. So let's start off with the total of questions in the quiz because that's really easy. Um, let's say const uh, total questions equals two, and that's just going to be equal to quiz dot length. Okay, super easy. Quiz is an array, so all we need to do is know how many items there are in the array, and that's the amount of questions that we have. So that was pretty simple. Uh, and now we get to the slightly more challenging part, which is how to get the total uh, correct answers. And here, essentially, we're going to need to loop through the um, quiz array and compare, just like we did up here before in our check answers uh, function, we're going to need to compare each of the answers with the correct answer. And each time that it's correct, we can add one to the total answers. Um, that's one way to approach it. We could, if we wanted to simplify it even further, use a reduce method on the array. Uh, but since that's a little abstract and might be a little complicated for some people, I think that even though it's maybe not the method I would choose in my final version of the code, I prefer show you how to do it with a loop because I think it's a little easier to grasp. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say const um, total correct answers. And my apologies, this is not going to be const, but this is going to be let. And that's because this total correct answers is something that's going to change. Uh, and I'm going to start it off by having it equal to zero. And you'll notice that this kind of resembles the other method that I uh, proposed earlier, where we would do it inside of the repeater. Um, but here we're actually using the pure data to do it instead of using the repeater data to do it, which I think is overall a better approach. Um, so we have here the total correct answers. And now I'm going to be running through a loop. So I'm going to say for uh, let uh, i equal 0. And then we're going to say as long as i is smaller than quiz.length, i++. plus plus. OK, so a, soup, a loop, you should be familiar with the concept of loops. Even if you're not from JavaScript, uh, if you have some basic coding knowledge, I think that a loop is a pretty um, pretty basic concept. If not, then please go <laughs> and learn a little bit more about that. Um, I also, by the way, I explain all of these JavaScript concepts uh, in my course on Udemy. Um, so if you kind of are looking for uh, also getting some Velo Wix knowledge and also getting some JavaScript fundamentals, I'd highly uh, recommend checking that out. Um, yeah, but here inside of the loop, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, checking if selected answer is equal to the correct answer. So I'm going to say, uh, again, we're going to have an if statement here. So if uh, what we have here is quiz i, and here we have correct, uh, sorry, dot correct answers zero, because remember, correct answers is an array. So we want to select just that one single item equals to equals to uh, quiz i dot selected answer. That's what we called the answer that the user selected in the on change that we set up for uh, for the radio binds item. And if that is the case, so if they are equal, then what we're going to do is we're going to say that total correct answers plus plus. Okay, so we'll add one to the total correct answers. And then uh, what we can do here is we can essentially use these calculated totals in order to alter some UI that we have on the screen. So for example, uh, if I was going to add in, let's add in some text over here. So I'll add in like a heading six. And I'll change this to say, uh, results. And I'll make this uh, results, let me select it. So I'll make it over here, I'll make it hidden by default. And I'll say that this is the results text. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and use that here inside of my calculate totals function. 
So for example, I'll say uh, results text dot text should be equal to and here we'll open up a template literal uh, notice here that this is back ticks and not single quotation marks i get a lot of comments on youtube um, people saying like oh i did it and didn't work it's probably because you're not using back ticks i know it's a little hard to see um, if i could zoom in more I, I would but even then i'm not sure it would be so clear but it's back ticks uh, and here we're going to have dollar sign and uh, open up curly brackets and we'll have the um, so let's have, let's say, 3 out of 10. That makes sense, right? So let's say I have total correct answers out of um, total questions. And if you want, you can also, I don't know, you can add in some kind of calculation, like a percentage or something like that, right? You could have, like, say, total correct answers divided by total questions times 100 to give them, like, points out of 100 or something like that. It's really the world's your oyster. Uh, and we're, we'll run this calculate totals function inside of our check answers function. So I'll call it right over here. So before we actually update the UI with all those check marks and X's, uh, what we'll do here is we'll just call the calculate totals function. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. So let me head into preview mode and we can test this out now. Okay, so here I am in preview mode, and let's go ahead and answer. So I'll do Jupiter, uh, William Shakespeare, Berlin, and let's go ahead and click Submit. Okay, so we have this working like before, and here we also have the totals. So I got one total correct out of three. Uh, and just one small note, uh, before I headed into preview mode, I added one line into the code that I had forgotten to, and that is here on the bottom of the calculate totals function. Uh, we need to also show the results text, because if you recall, I hit it by default, because we don't want to see the results text before we actually uh, submit the quiz. Um, so that's uh, one thing that you should not forget. Uh, but once you've added that in, now we have a full uh, user experience. So we're not currently yet storing any of the results of the quiz, but the user has a full experience in terms of answering the questions and seeing what they got wrong and what they got right. If you want to store the data uh, of the quizzes, so like you want to keep track of what people have been answering on the quiz, and that's particularly relevant for a survey, uh, then we'll go ahead and talk about that now. So in terms of storing the quiz results or submission in a collection, there are two general approaches that we can take. Uh, but let's first start off by creating a collection that will store uh, these responses or submissions. So I'm going to go back over here to CMS, and you should already be a pro at this because we've already created a collection before. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new collection. I'm going to start from scratch, and I'm going to call this submissions. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and click create. And here we're going to need to decide what fields to create to store the data from the submission of the quiz. And here's where we kind of hit that crossroad. And there's generally two approaches that we could take. So one is to treat this like a form. And then essentially what we would do is we'd add a field for each question. So let's add, go ahead and add in a field here. And this would be, you know, question one, and then I would put the answer of the user inside of that field. And then we'd have kind of like an easy interface to see, okay, so question one, they answered this. Question two, they answered this. So this is an okay solution if you know that you're going to have like a fixed amount of questions in your quiz, and it'll always be in the same order, and you'll always be able to associate between a specific question and a specific answer field. Um, that would kind of contradict the whole setup that we did with the repeater where we were trying to be flexible and allow for different amounts of questions. Uh, so if you have like a quiz that like selects a random amount of questions from like a pool or something that's a little more dynamic that you'll want to change over time, uh, it would be a little hard to set up the submissions form, uh, the submissions collection, sorry, with a set amount of fields that would accept the answers. Um, so what we will do in this case, in order to be a little more flexible, which is like another option, 
is to set up either an array field or an object field to store all of the data from the form, uh, from the quiz, sorry. So let me show you how to do that here. So actually, it's that same array field that we encountered earlier. Uh, and I'm going to go over here and select that, choose field type, and I'm going to call this answers. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And another thing that we can store here just for convenience is, for example, the uh, total answers that were correct that were answered correctly. Uh, so I can go over here and add in, let's say, a number and choose field type and say, let's say, total correct answers. And again, this is something you'd be able to derive from the data that you're going to store in the array as well. But if you want to just see like an easy score or total correct answers or something like that, uh, then you can create a field for that as well. And this is what this is uh, demonstrating over here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Um, other data that you might want to collect in this submission might be, for example, I don't know, the name or the email of the person who's filling out the quiz. Um, if they are a member of your website, then their ID will automatically be associated with the owner of each item in the collection. Uh, but if you're kind of letting just visitors to your website fill out this quiz or survey or whatever it is, then you will likely want to collect some kind of identifiable information so that you can associate certain submissions with certain people, unless it's completely anonymous, and then all you need to collect is pretty much what you have over here. So let's hop back to the code and see how we would store this submission information in the collection. There's one more quick thing that you'll want to double check before you actually uh, begin to code is the permissions for this collection. So our quiz collection was a read only collection. So we were only reading the information in the collection. So the default permissions worked for us. But for a collection that is supposed to be used for submissions, we're going to have to go over here to more actions, and then permissions and privacy. And we're going to want to double check here that the add content is set to whoever we want to allow to add content. So whether that's site members, if it's a quiz for only site members, or if it's for anyone, if we just want to let any visitor on the site uh, submit the quiz. Uh, and then you can just go ahead here and click Save. And <clears throat> click Save. And now we're ready to actually head in and start coding. Okay, So here back on our page code, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new function over here. And this is also going to be an asynchronous function because we're submitting data to a database. And I'm going to call this submit quiz. And what we're going to do is essentially we are going to say uh, const to insert. So what what is the data that we actually want to insert into our collection? And we want to insert two things. So if you recall, we want to insert the actual uh, data of the quiz, so this entire quiz array over here. And let's just double check and see what the name of the field is for that. So that's again going over here to databases. And then here we have our submissions collection. And uh, that's going to be here answers. Okay, so I'm going to copy over that field ID. And so our answers is going to be essentially the quiz object. So it'll uh, the quiz array. Uh, so essentially, it'll include all the data, so also the questions, also the correct answer, and also the user selected answer, will have all of that data inside of the submissions collection. Uh, in addition to that, we also wanted to get the total correct answers. So let me go, go ahead and copy that over as well. And to get the total correct answers, we can essentially use this uh, function that we have, the calculate totals. So we're going to need to do some refactoring uh, for our code in general. So what I'm going to do here is at the end of the calculate totals function, I'm going to return the uh, total correct answers from the function. So that means that if I call this function, it will return a value instead of only uh, running certain actions inside of the function. So now what I can do over here is for total correct answers, I can essentially just call this function calculate totals. And the value that comes back to here should be equal to uh, the total correct answers. Uh, one thing I don't want to forget to do here is to not call this again up here. Okay, so we're calling, uh, if you recall, 
inside of check answers, we're calling calculate totals. So we don't need to do that here anymore because we'll call check answers inside of our submit quiz function. And we're already calling calculate totals over here. So we don't need to call it twice because that's redundant. Not that it would break anything, but we just don't need to. Uh, so now that we have this to insert declared, we could essentially go over here and say const inserted item equals to await Wix data dot insert. And we're inserting into our submissions collection. Again, if you don't recall what the collection ID is, we can always go over here to databases. And here we have submissions and just copy the collection ID and then go right back over here and paste it in. And what are we going to be inserting? So we're going to be inserting this to insert. And again, if you decided to insert other data along with it as well, such as like a name that you collected or an email or something else, you would add those all over here uh, to these fields here as well. Uh, once we've inserted that, I'll just add in a console log here. So console.log, let's say inserted item. And again, this is just for the testing stage after you're done and you're ready to send your project into production. So letting users use it, I recommend getting rid of all the logs that you put in for the development stage. So this is going to be the inserted item. And uh, now that we have that inserted item, let's go ahead and call our check answers function. Okay, so right over here, check answers. Uh, we'll call that over here. And this submit quiz function is what we'll call when we actually click the submit button. So instead of running check answers, we'll run submit quiz, which also submits the quiz to the collection, but also checks for the answers. It also calculates the total. It also does everything else that we need. Um, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead uh, back into preview mode, or you can even double check on your live site and make sure that this submit quiz is working. And so here I am in preview mode, and let's go ahead and fill out this uh, quiz. Let me answer a few here. I'll answer some right and some wrong as usual, and I'll go ahead and I'll click submit. And you saw that the submit took a little more time there because it's also submitting to the database. Uh, if you want, you can kind of add in like a loader or you can add in also like a success message, even though this indication pretty much works as a success message because they see that the answers have been checked. So it's really up to you. Uh, and let's just take a look here at the logs. So we have here uh, inserted item and we can see here uh, that we have the answers array and we have the total correct answers. Uh, and if I go back to our collection, so let's go here to databases and I'll open up our submissions collection so you can see what that looks like. So this is what a submission looks like at the moment. So we have the total correct answers and we have this array in here, uh, which I know might look like a little like just like jumbled information. It's not as clean and beautiful as a table, but it does allow us to store complex info uh, over here. So it allows us to kind of retain all of the data that we want in like a more complex data structure as opposed to like simplifying it into individual fields because that really um, conforms us to a certain amount of questions and a certain amount of answers and stuff like that. Um, and what you can do if it's a little hard for you to take a look at this data and understand it just by looking at it like this is to create a, another interface on your website, like maybe a dashboard page which allows you to open up a certain quiz submission and visually see the submissions uh, in like a quiz format. And that will help you understand like what the question was, what the optional answers were, what the answers that were answered were. Um, and you can really like process this data in whatever way you want, but it, it requires that additional effort uh, as opposed to just seeing it kind of like visually here, whoops, inside of the uh, submission uh, collection. So that is, whoops, accidentally kind of got rid of the answer. <laughs> that is uh, how I would approach submissions for a quiz. Um, if I was building the site, then again, for your specific use case, it could be that the original option that I uh, or the first option that I presented works for you. And I know that it could be um, like visually more simple in terms of seeing all the data and processing it, etc. So one last thing that I'd like to show you is how to give the option to select multiple uh, answers for each question. 
So here we currently use radio buttons, but let's say that we want to have the option to allow the user to select um, multiple answers for some of the questions. So for that, we're going to use a different element called a multi checkbox. So let's go over here back to add elements. And we're going to look here for an input. Uh, let the input right over here. And we're going to look for uh, checkboxes. And here we have the multi checkbox. So let's just select a basic multi checkbox. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to manage the choices. And again, I'm just going to get rid of all of our choices here. And I'm going to rename this one. I'm going to edit the label to say answer, just like before. And we also don't need this title over here. So you can see it kind of has a built in title sport interests. So we don't really need that either. Uh, because we have our uh, question, even though it's requiring this over here. So I'm just going to put a space. Let's see if that works. No. So for now, since that title seems to be required, I just put like a dot, so like a, a period over there instead of the title. And I'm going to try and remove that using code. Um, so we'll see if that works. If not, you might have to get creative with how you uh, use this. I'm, I'm pretty shocked because I don't remember that being required previously. Maybe they made like a slight change. Uh, but either way, I want to talk about principles and give you ideas and tools and you can figure out that uh, uh, later on. So I've added in this uh, multiple choice option over here and I'm going to leave both of them. So I'm going to leave also the radio buttons and also the uh, checkbox group. I'm going to rename this. Uh, let's call this um, answers checkbox group. And what we'll do is we will collapse both of these. So I'll set both of these to be collapsed. So also the radio buttons and also our answers checkbox group. And what we'll do is based on the amount of answers that are in the correct answers field, we will expand either the radio buttons or the checkbox group. Okay, so depending on which one is uh, relevant. So let's go over here. And when we are setting up our repeater, okay, so let's go right over here into the on item ready for the repeater. And what we'll do is we will first, right over here, we'll check and see um, if item data dot um, correct answers dot length is bigger than one, then we will expand the uh, will expand the checkboxes. Okay, so we'll do answers checkbox group dot expand. And again, this is for a scenario where you want to have both types of questions in the same quiz. If you have a quiz with only one or the other, then obviously you don't need this whole setup. And you can just have either the checkboxes or the radio um, group, whichever one is the one you want. Um, but here, this is like the more complex scenario where you have both. Uh, and else we will have, we will be expanding the uh, radio buttons. Okay, dot expand. Okay, so that's that part of the logic. Uh, we also have to make sure that we set up the options for our checkbox group as well. Um, so we could actually take this and put it here inside of this else. Okay, because we don't need to uh, set up the radio buttons if we're not expanding the radio buttons. And we can actually paste this same code right over here and change this to answers checkbox group because the logic for setting up the options uh, for a checkbox group is actually the same as for radio buttons. That really saves us a lot of effort. Um, so that's what we have over there. And now essentially what we need to do is just change the logic for determining what is a correct answer and what is an incorrect answer. So in order to unify our logic, I'm going to try and make sure that our selected answer is always stored in an array because the checkboxes are going to return an array with several selections possibly. 
Uh, so in order to make sure that we have consistency over the data types, our selected answer will always be in an array. So that means we're going to need to change the logic here for the uh, answer radio buttons on change. We also need to set up the on change for our checkbox group. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to first select all of this uh, and I'm going to cut it out here and I'm going to paste it inside of the logic uh, that we're running for the radio button. So only if we have the radio buttons activated will we run this on change uh, event handler. And here for the selected answer, I'm going to make sure to put it inside of an array because we know that this is not going to come back as an array. Uh, as opposed to how we want to handle the answers for the checkbox group. So let me just paste this right over here. And I'm going to say here, instead of answers radio button, I'm going to say checkbox group on change. So when we have that change, then the selected answer here is going to be equal to just selected answer because this should come back as an array to begin with. Okay, because that's how the uh, checkbox value works. Okay, so that's in terms of setting that up. Uh, we have several other places that we're dealing with the answers over here. So first of all, uh, inside of calculate total. So here, uh, when we're comparing the correct answers, um, we also have to think about what's considered a correct answer and what's not. So if it's, let's say, you have multiple options that you can select, and if you select one option that's correct, is that correct or not? Or do you have to select both? Um, so that really has to do with you as the owner of the quiz. What's the logic that you want to implement uh, for your users? I'm going to assume that it's only a correct answer if you've selected all of the correct options. Okay, so if you select just one of the correct options, then that doesn't cut it. Um, so let's uh, set that up here in terms of making sure that the user has selected all of the correct options. So now that we're dealing with arrays, we're going to have to take a slightly different approach for checking that our answers are correct. Um, so here inside of our loop, instead of using this logic, which just one for one compares two strings of the correct answer and the selected answer, here our selected answer is going to be an array, and our correct answers, which was an array already, might include more than one item. So essentially what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to verify that both of the arrays include each other. And that's the only way that we can cross reference and make sure that we have both selected a correct answer and all the correct answers. Um, so let's go ahead and set that up. So here inside the loop, instead of this logic that we have over here, uh, we're going to need to get first of all, Let's check one way. So let's make sure that all of the um, answers that the person has um, answered in the quiz are included in the correct answers. So let's say answers are in correct answers equals two. And here we're going to have the quiz dot selected answer. Uh, dot every because remember this is an array and here we basically check that every single item uh, we check every single item in the array and check if that's included if that is included in the correct answers so for every item we're going to check here and see if the correct uh, so here we have again quiz i okay we have to make sure because we have to remember that we're in a loop here so try and help me remember that. So I, this is quiz I, that selected answer. And here as well, we're going to be dealing with quiz I, correct answer, correct answers, uh, dot includes item. Okay, so this is, this is a pretty complex uh, line of JavaScript here. But basically, we're going through the selected answer array. And we're making sure that our correct answers array includes every single item in it. So that means that if we hit an item inside of our answers that's not in the correct answers array, then that means that the user has selected at least one incorrect answer. And now we're going to need to check the reverse. So essentially, we're going to say here that const 
Okay. Um, const correct. Let's say, let's call this all answers. Answers are correct. And I'll explain in a moment why I chose that name. Uh, but essentially, we're going to go now through our quiz I dot uh, correct answers. Okay, and we're going to be looping through those using every. And we're going to check that for each item, the quiz I uh, uh, ch -ch -ch, selected answers dot selected answer dot includes the item. Okay, so here we're checking the reverse, and we're checking essentially that the um, that our selected answer includes all of the correct answers. Okay, so I can change the name here actually to all answers are correct or answer includes 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 all correct answers. That would actually be also be an appropriate name. Okay, so answers are incorrect answers and answers include all correct answers. So I again, this is a, a slightly complicated um, approach here. I, I hope that it's somewhat understandable. If not, you can leave a comment and I can try and explain uh, or you can post to the to the forum and I can try and explain a little more. Uh, but basically, if both of these things are true, uh, th that's the values that we're going to get here. These are either going to be true or false. They're going to be Boolean values. And if both of these are true, then that means our answer is correct. Uh, and if both of them uh, or only one of them is true, then uh, if both of them are false or only one of them is true, then it's not a correct answer. Um, so let's just double check that over here. So we'll say, um, let's say um, if answer includes all correct answers and uh, answer mm, answers are incorrect answers, then we'll say total correct answers plus plus. Okay, so this was all just for counting the amount of total correct answers. Uh, and we're going to need to use a similar logic to determine uh, if the answers are correct also inside of our repeater. So now we're also going to need to set up a similar logic inside of our repeater, which is displaying the check marks and the X marks. Um, so I'm going to copy these two lines over here. Uh, and we're obviously going to need to make some adjustments because the way that it's working there is a little different. And I'm going to go here to our check answers function. I'm going to get rid of these console logs over here. And I'm just going to paste in these two lines of codes that I copied. And you could already see some red squiggly lines because we need to make some adjustments. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to dynamically get the selected answer based on the type of question. Because if it's you know multiple choice with multiple answers, then it's going to be one type of selected answer. And if it's the radio buttons again, then it's going to be the other kind. And we're going to have to deal with both of those. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to just say uh, let selected answer. OK, so this is going to be like a global variable initially and or at least within this scope. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to have an if statement. So we're going to have here if item data dot um, correct answers dot length is bigger than one. OK, then we'll say that selected answer is equal to and here we're going to have the item checkbox answers checkbox group dot value. OK, so that's if we have the checkbox group showing and else we're going to have the selected answer is going to be equal to item and radio answers radio buttons dot value. But we have to remember here that we want to wrap it in an array, uh, just that we're treating both of these the same. So let me go over here and wrap this value inside of an array. So essentially, selected answer will be an array with one item. Awesome. So now that we have that done over there, we can 
set up these two values to work with selected answer and with our correct answers inside of the item data. So here, instead of quiz I selected answer, we can just say plain old selected answer. And instead of correct answers, uh, a quiz I correct answers, we're just going to have item data correct answers. Item data correct answers. And I'll make the same two adjustments over here. So here it'll be item data correct answers. And here it will be uh, selected answer. No, just selected answer. Sorry. Uh, okay, awesome. So we set up those two. And now here in terms of the condition, so instead of checking just the value of equality between two strings, we need to make sure that both of our booleans are true. So I'm going to say here answers are incorrect answers and and answers are answer includes all correct answers. Okay, and with that, uh, we should be ready to at least start testing. We did a lot of changes to the code here. Uh, so there is a, <laughs> I'd say there's at least a 30% chance of there being a bug or two. Um, but we're ready to start testing and you don't know till you test. Uh, the only change that we'll need to make is to head into our collection. So let me go over here and I'm going to go into our quiz. And I'm just going to set it so that some of our answers or some of our questions have multiple correct answers. So for example, over here, so let me uh, change this. So instead of just Berlin and Paris, um, let's add back in, I don't know, London it was. And I'll select here two answers. So let's hear London as well. And then for this, planet question. So instead of just Mars, I'll have here uh, Venus as well. Okay, so these these two questions uh, should have two answers each. So those should display kind of the check boxes and just this middle question should display the radio buttons. So let's go ahead and head into preview mode and see if everything we just wrote is working or not. Okay, so here I am in preview mode. And first bug <laughs> is that over here, I see that uh, even though the correct um, form of question display um, is being displayed, so here it's the checkboxes and here it's the radio buttons, I see here that it still is displaying both of them for each question. So that's likely, again, a mistake with the $W $item. Uh, so let me take a look over here. And yes, so we see here that I accidentally wrote um, that $W Answers checkbox group that expand. So this will need to be item. And here as well, this will need to be item. Okay. And that should deal with that. Again, this happens to me all the time. Uh, it's just instinct. So don't be too hard on yourself. It happens to you too. Uh, so here we are. So now it's displaying. So we see here that it's displaying the correct, um, you know, options display here for each question. Uh, so now let's try answering this and seeing if it actually processes those answers correctly. Um, so here for Red Planet, to be honest, I don't even remember what I said, but let's just try here. Uh, I'll just select Mars. Uh, for Hamlet, I'll select, let's say, the wrong answer. And for France, I'll select, I think that I do London and Paris. I guess we'll find out in a moment. So let's go ahead and click Submit. And boom. So let's see here. So here we can see that um, for Jupiter, Mars, Venus, so I got it wrong, uh, even though Mars was one of the correct answers, because I didn't select the other correct one, which I think is Venus. Uh, this one I obviously got wrong because, you know, um, it's one, there's one option and I got that option wrong. And this one I got correct because I got Paris and London, which were both uh, the right options. Let's try switching this up a bit. Um, yeah, and we see that the calculation here on top also came out correct. So that's great. So let me try here selecting now Venus. And I'll select the correct answer here for Hamlet. And for France, I'll try and get this wrong. So I won't select London, even though obviously it's an incorrect answer. But in terms of our, our truth, our data, our collection, uh, this would be an incorrect answer. Um, so let me go ahead and click Submit again. Oh, shoot. Okay, so I need to... Uh, 
I'll need to go back to the editor and back into preview mode because I didn't set up any logic which would allow double submission. So it showed kind of both of them. Uh, so let's just try this again quickly. Um, so we said here we're just going to do Mars. Uh, sorry, here we're going to do Mars and Venus. Here we'll do Shakespeare. And here we will do uh, just Paris, let's say. I'm going to submit that. And boom. So we got these two right and this one wrong. So again, it's not you know, 100% scientific in terms of unit testing, but I tested two scenarios uh, and I got the answers that I expected in both. So I'm going to say that for now, I'm quite comfortable with the code that we wrote. Um, as with everything, there's always ways to improve and refactor the code. Um, a little note about um, surveys. So we didn't really talk about surveys here, but the general logic between setting up a quiz and a survey should be quite the same. Uh, the only difference is that you probably are not going to display uh, correct or incorrect answers um, to people who submit a survey, but you will want to store that data somewhere. Uh, and you might want to do some kind of calculation. So like based on the aggregated answers that users have gotten, maybe display um, like a total, you know, total amount of answered a certain answer for a certain question. Uh, and you might want to display that to the end user as well. So that's kind of like a small thing we haven't talked about. But if it's something that interests you, let me know in the comments uh, and we can possibly make a follow up to this. I will say that in my course on Udemy, again, uh, we do specifically the final project there is how to set up this really cool kind of like social polling website. So like a, a, a social website for people to create polls and share them. And there we kind of dive into a more relevant example for like a survey as opposed to a um, as a quiz and how to let users like create dynamic surveys with like multiple questions and answers and stuff. So it's pretty cool um, if you want to check that out. Um, but if this suffices for you, then I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial. I hope you found it informative uh, and we're going to wrap up here for today. So if you liked it, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions of how to continue this series, more things you'd want to know about quizzes, surveys, Wix, Vela, web development, code, etc., uh, please leave that in the comment section. I read all the comments. I know I don't answer all the comments. Uh, not all comments are answerable, <laughs> uh, but I do answer, let's say, 90% of the comments, uh, whatever I can. And uh, yeah, don't forget to also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this uh, every week. And I will see you next time. Thank you.